Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Wujaha and today we're going to do a quick video, a tutorial on how I think that you could be eligible for a potential ZK Sync airdrop. Uh, now, for those of you familiar with ZK Sync, you'll kind of know what to do already. Uh, so this is going to be someone who's kind of new to crypto or new to kind of these airdrop kind of systems um, and uh, someone who probably hasn't got the Arbitrum airdrop because if you have, you probably know what to do already. So for those of you who don't know, ZK Sync is a new layer two blockchain that uses uh, ZK rollups rather than optimistic rollups, essentially to help scale Ethereum. So it's a blockchain built on top of Ethereum uh, and they don't have a token as of yet, but there is a lot of speculation that there could be one in the future. We've seen other uh, roll-ups in the form of Optimism and Arbitrum both offer airdrops being four or five figures uh, in most cases uh, and the chances are really that ZK Sync probably will have a token at some point in the future. Now it could be a long time, it could be even a year or so away from uh, this video and so this is something that you might have to be patient with but there are lots of things that you can do to potentially be eligible for one and so that's what we're going to cover today. Um, so ultimately the first thing that you really have to start off with is you need the wallet um, you can have any Ethereum wallet so Metamask or Rabi or any kind of sort of wallet that you want um, and the main thing that you want to do first is basically bridge over funds from the Ethereum network to the ZK Sync network so that you can basically interact with all of the stuff built on ZK Sync um, and there's a couple of ways to do this you can either go the traditional way via the uh, official bridge by ZK Sync which is portal.zksync.io slash bridge uh, and you can basically move your Ethereum or USDC basically from the Ethereum mainnet to the ZK Sync mainnet. And once it's on the ZK Sync mainnet, then you can obviously use all of those funds within the ZK Sync ecosystem. Um, of course, you have to be aware that because you're using the Ethereum network to do this, uh, you do have to pay some gas fees um, and uh, it's probably going to cost you about $20 if you do it this way. Uh, in terms of fees. However, you can go to Orbiter Finance and you can uh, bridge over funds not from not, not only from Ethereum, but from Polygon, Arbitrum, um, Loopring, Optimism, Starknet, and the BNB chain. Uh, and so by using um, the Arbitrum network or the Optimism network, you might save uh, you know a bit of fees. Um, for those of you who don't really operate on chain, uh, you can actually, as far as I'm aware, use certain centralized exchanges like Binance to basically get some Ethereum and take it directly onto Arbitrum. Uh, and so if you basically do that, you'll have your Ethereum ETH on Arbitrum and then you can use something like Orbiter Finance to go from Arbitrum to ZK Sync. Um, again this takes just you know maybe a minute, minute or so so again all you need to do is you know let's say if you've got 0.005 uh, ETH you can basically move that from Arbitrum to ZK Sync. Of course there is a little bit of uh, a fee as well but you know it's going to be like a dollar or so uh, and once you've done that you've got your funds on the ZK Sync network the main net. Because once you've done that, you can basically interact with all the different applications. And that's essentially what we want to do. Now, ZK Sync, since it started, has grown quite significantly. You can see that uh, we're already at $45 million in total value locked on, um, on the entire network. Uh, this website says that there's actually 107 million, so I don't know which one to believe, but uh, I think the, the matter of the fact is that it's growing and it's growing every day by you know, a factor of millions, uh, which is good to see. And already we've got a variety of different applications here in, in the form of DEXs, derivatives, lending and options. Um, and, and that's great to see as well, because the more applications, the more stuff to do essentially. Um, so in terms of becoming eligible, I'm going to kind of think about the same sort of criteria that Arbitrum deployed and, as well as Optimism. And ultimately it's about being as active and as possible as well as being regularly active as possible um, and one of the things that came up in the Arbitrum uh, airdrop was the number of smart contracts that you've interacted with. So you either needed to do 100 transactions or interact with 100 smart contracts. Um, and that sounds like it might be a lot, but 100 transactions is not actually too many, um, especially if you do it over time. Uh, and already we've got a variety of uh, applications. So here we've got SyncSwap, uh, just a platform where you can swap one asset to another. So you could basically take your ETH that you've got and swap a little bit into USDC. You you could actually provide liquidity for it um, you could go to mute um, and do the same here we can use on-chain trade and 
kind of do some transactions here as well. Ultimately, the idea is that you just need to explore and try as many different applications as possible. Now, I'd say that right now we don't really have too many applications. We've only got really, you know, about 10 or so, maybe nine actually. Um, and I'd say that probably over the next few months, we'll probably see this go to like 50. Uh, we'll see lots of innovation and kind of new stuff come onto ZK Sync. And I think when that does happen, that's really when you kind of want to be using the ecosystem as much as possible. Try and explore all of these different applications as much as you can. Um, some of them might be a little bit complex, but I think with time you will kind of figure it out and kind of see how to use them. Provide liquidity, do transactions, uh, try new stuff. Um, and I think generally if you do that over time, especially if you do it, let's say every single month, uh, then it shows that you're kind of committed to the chain, you're using all the new stuff. And I, I think really that is kind of the criteria that something like ZK Sync would use uh, to kind of give you an airdrop. So there are maybe some more complex things that we'll maybe talk about in the future, but I think for the time being, if you're able to do this, you're really setting yourself up very nicely for the potential of an airdrop in the near future. Uh, I say in the near future, I think it could probably be even a year or so. Um, but I think given the size of ZK Sync, uh, and I think if they were to do an airdrop, you know, I would kind of put them in the same category as Arbitrum and Optimism. And so you're looking at multi-billion dollar valuations here. Uh, and so if you are to get an airdrop there, you, you know, you're looking at something very nice, maybe four figures, five figures, something like that. Who knows? Uh, again, this is all speculation. We don't even know if they are going to do one. They could just decide that they're going to just keep all the tokens themselves. In fact, they haven't even announced that they're going to officially have a token. It's kind of a bit of speculation. So that's pretty much what I think you should do for the time being. If you do that, I think you'll set yourself very well. Uh, and there are a number of other kind of blockchains as well that I think you should do this on, but we're going to talk about them in different videos so stay tuned for the variety of airdrop potential uh, protocols uh, that we're going to have i'm going to try and make videos on all of them so smash the like button if you found this interesting drop a comment down below as well that really helps me out subscribe to the channel and of course i'll be back with plenty more videos in the near future